founding director of the Democracy Institute. He's also adjunct scholar with Cato Center for Representative Government, and he joins us now. Uh, Patrick, first I just want to ask you about the immediate investigation as to this uh, potential attack. Time, one would think, would be of the essence to find these suspected terrorists. There is one, as you know, said to already be in the United States. Is it feasible that authorities will get this individual in time? It's certainly possible, but we can't even say, sadly, that it's probable, because obviously at this late stage in the game, uh, they think they are tracking the right people, but they cannot be sure of that, and that's not their fault, because there are no certainties in this counterterrorism business. You know, it's a question of um, prioritizing the risks. They're always following these threads. Some are more credible than others, and at the moment, they've had to decide fairly recently and fairly quickly, this is the most likely problem we're going to face, so we're going to devote our resources to that, which is perfectly reasonable and a, a rational calculation, but it's a calculation. And, and so there could be other threats that they're having to ignore or at least put, make secondary uh, priorities uh, because you cannot cover everything. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just have to keep our finger and toes, fingers and toes co crossed that the best people that the U.S. has are working on the correct threat and pray that they're right. Mm. Do we have enough of the best? I mean, one thinks of <laughs> the budgetary constraints, especially at this particular time, right? And they're talking about government yeah. cuts. Well, and here yeah. we see how, you know, uh, many Americans, I'm sure, would say no expense is enough for yeah, protection, well, right? That, well, that's right. That's really the popular feeling. But the reality is that we, we are spending enough. There's been more than a trillion, a trillion dollars in new spending over the last decade. Uh, there is a new government department. There are literally hundreds of new agencies. A great deal is being done that wasn't done, and that's good news. But the problem is, is that we're almost spending too much money. And by that I mean, for example, we have a lot of agencies and a lot of people doing the same job in different parts of the city and different parts of the country. There's an incredible amount of overlap and redundancy and waste. And, you know, one of, the, one of the legitimate complaints right after 9-11 was that the FBI and the CIA and all these various organizations didn't talk to each other. And that was absolutely true, and that was a huge problem. Well, now they tell each other everything, but that's also a problem because no one has time to listen and read what everyone is producing. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it's an absolute avalanche of material, and so we're back to looking at just what our little outfit does in our little corner of this world because that's all we've got time for. Right. Let me ask you, so one of these individuals suspected, uh, you know, attackers, if we're to believe that this is a, a truly a credible plot, is said to be inside the United States. A lot of people, no doubt, asking themselves, well, how, how did this guy even get in the U.S.? Is it fair to ask that question? It's certainly fair to ask the question. I mean, my understanding is that uh, we think that two of the three um, suspects that are being tracked are American citizens. I could be wrong, but my guess is that this one individual is probably one of those two American citizens. So if, that, if that's true, then he obviously would have far easier access to the country than someone who wasn't a citizen. Uh, but you would, you would hope that if he is involved with al-Qaeda, that he, his uh, profile would have been flagged somewhere by someone mm. because we have now have so many people looking for suspect individuals. Yet, but, yeah, let me interrupt you, and I apologize, but yet you say 10 years later America is not any safer. Uh -huh. So, you know, is it that uh, we're failing on policing? There's not enough there? I mean, you say there's enough money. Or is this really truly going to be solved through foreign policy? Well, it, it's, it's two things. We're spending enough money, but what I'm saying is that we're not spending it necessarily in the right places. So we, we, we've, you know, we, we're spending some good money in some good places, and we're wasting money in a lot of places. So, for example, our borders are not as secure as they should be, given the resources that we're throwing at this problem. And then you're absolutely right. Foreign policy is the thing that's bringing us down as well, because whether it's Iraq, Afghanistan, you know, whatever you think, whether those were good or bad wars to go into, no one can doubt the fact that they have both created a new generation of anti-American terrorists. Uh, and so American foreign policy continues to create a problem for itself or at least prevent it from dampening down that problem overseas. So, so more and more terrorists want to do us 
harm and want to come here and blow things up and blow Americans up. And until we get our foreign policy straight, as well as our domestic security, this problem is not going to go away. Uh, well, we appreciate your time on this. Patrick Basham is director of the Democracy Institute, joining us on the line from Washington. Thanks for this.